Okay, here we go. Now, I heard some compost a couple weeks ago. This was green grass, grass clippings. I put it in there, out of water, it's breaking down now. It's going to be compost. On the way home today, I got a couple of bags of leaves and pine straw that somebody raked off their lawn. Now, this stuff is perfectly dry. As long as it stays dry, it won't change. I use it for mulch on top of the ground, and then eventually it'll turn as it mixes with the soil into compost, become nutrients. My idea is to build the soil. These are all my azaleas over here. Yeah. Lawn's growing good back over there. Now we'll go down my pathway. I, uh, I'm part of the garbage cycle. As I drive around, I see people put stuff in the paper bags from Home Depot. And uh, I pick it up. Now, this is all leaves and pine straw chopped up. It makes good bedding for my dogs. It keeps them up there out of the mud. Keeps it much drier. Keeps the dogs much cleaner. And uh, what I got here now is interesting. I haven't seen this before, but this was, uh, I picked this up yesterday. This is Bermuda grasses sometime. They mowed it for the first time this year. It was all dead grass. Bermuda grass goes dead in the wintertime, gets all brown. And uh, I thought this would make wonderful moldy. So uh, I got wildflower seeds in here. This soil is real brown and black. Even the stones I get out of it are black. Real rich soil. But also, it's underneath these pine trees, which makes the soil so rich, and it's real acid. So, uh, I put, I put 40 pounds of lime on here the other day, and then I gave it, and then I put in my wildflower seeds, and then I put my mulch over the top, and then I tried to water it, which was a mistake. I should have watered the soil. You're supposed to water the soil and put the mulch on top. What I found was this mulch is really good. I had to put a lot of water on it before it soaked through into the soil. Anyhow, live and learn, water the soil, and then spread the mulch. Mulch is a lot like, for moisture, what insulation is for, uh, for a building. Insulation prevents heat transfer. Mulch prevents moisture transfer. I'll show you this mulch I got. I picked it up yesterday, and now I got a bag. I don't ever have to buy bags. But this stuff was all in a bag. See that? Can you see that? It's all fluffy and light. It makes wonderful mulch. And the thing about it is, it'll break down. It'll hold, certainly hold the water. I laid it out here for my trailways, my pathways around my garden, so we can walk without walking through the mud. It's uh, much better walking on this. Now I got my tomatoes in. And then I got some more leaves. Now this time I, I soaked my tomato plants overnight in water the way I learned to when I was a kid. And then I watered the soil. See, this soil's been watered. And then we get over here. Watered the soil good after I planted the tomato plants. And then, uh, and then I spread my mulch. Mulch will keep the... If I look over here now, this this soil is wet and this Georgia sun will just suck the water right up out of the soil. Not so over here where I got my compost. Hello! What time to eat? Time to eat? Yeah. Okay, I'm coming. So I got all my tomato plants in and I got them uh, mulch and insulation. Insulation in a building prevents heat flow. Sometimes you want to do that, sometimes you don't. Mulch prevents moisture flow. Now, sometimes you want to prevent both moisture and heat flow. And sometimes you want to enhance moisture flow and heat flow. So, uh, what we're talking about here a lot is soil temperature. Soil temperature is a dependent variable. It depends on the interface between 
the atmosphere and the soil. Snow cover, for example, in up north prevents the frost from going too deep. And sometimes up north when there's lack of snow cover during a real cold winter, the frost will get down underneath the big old tree roots and kill the trees. And uh, likewise, if you cover the soil, you keep the soil dry at the interface between the, the soil and the atmosphere, if you keep it dry, keep it covered, something like artificial turf, the soil temperature is going to be much different than it would have been if you let the water run through it all winter and cold water run into it and, and lose heat to the atmosphere. So that's what we're talking about, organic architecture, organic gardening. It's got a lot to do with soil temperature. There's a lot to be learned. And uh, for example, my contention is you're in a building, you're supposed to put the insulation between the building and the atmosphere. And you're supposed to make a thermal pathway between the building and the earth. That way in the summertime, for example, you minimize the amount of energy input from the atmosphere into the building, into the living space of the building. And at that point, you want to take what heat there is inside the building and put it into the soil. Because that's a tremendous heat sink that can soak up a whole lot of, lot of uh, heat from summer flooding. The same way a, a reservoir and a dam can soak up a lot of water from the wet season and store it until it's needed later. Uh, these rocks, now we'll get into these later, but these rocks, I gotta clean them up before you see anything. They just a couple of years ago it used to be a stone wall out there in the woods. I recycled them, uh, put them into made terraces here because you got three big old dogs. They come sliding down the hill. Anyhow, that's what I'm learning about farming and gardening and stuff like this. These are all of my planting areas. I'm going to put cucumbers up against the fence. Probably snap beans up against this fence. I don't know what's going here or here. I don't know, potatoes somewhere, maybe potatoes there. Anyhow, I got these planting areas and my little trailway system, roadway system through the garden. Lilies from last year. Oh, there's some lilies I transplanted. They're looking good. They were in the shade for a couple of years. Okay, it's there. I gotta go eat lunch now. <laughs>